Welcome back to Stormworks Basics Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over retractable landing gear and how to make that work. I see a lot of people having issues where their gear will collapse while they're on the ground because they're not locked. Uh, this will also show how you can have the gear uh, not be timed, but be based on the position of the gear. That is my preference. I think that works a lot better. So let's go ahead and we'll start building. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. And so often modern aircraft have tricycle landing gear. So that's going to be one nose wheel and two mains or sets of mains, we're going to go ahead and start like this. So, you know, you'd start with your aircraft, of course, but we're just going to start building without an aircraft. So we're going to use a robotic power pivot. Now, the reason I like using these is because this will report its position to you. So as you can see, the arrow is point going down or forward. That's going to have the gear retract backwards. You can do this either way. You can have the gear go forward. You can have the gear go backwards. It's up to you. Uh, in this case, I'm going to have the gear go backwards. And what we want to do is we want to offset this by one block so that the central pivot portion is in the middle of the aircraft. So we'll just do that, and I'll just connect it. All right. And the reason I'm using these, again, is this will report its current rotation. Uh, often you'll see people recommend that you t have timing for your gear. If you do timing, if you have any sort of hiccup in the timing, say you get a lag spike or if you're pulling some G's and the gear come down, it's a good way to get your gear stuck. This system always reports where the wheel is. So if the wheel is on its way down, the door is going to open. When the wheel gets all the way down, the door is going to close. When the wheel wants to go back up and starts going up, the doors will open. And when the gear goes up, the doors will close. So that's why I use this system here. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some block and I'm going to kind of go out and just build kind of a square rectangle over here. And um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a wheel. You can use coasters, but I prefer these wheels because you can steer these. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to get this here. I'm going to leave a gap underneath the pivot. And we're going to grab the wheel. And I want to get this in the center like that so it's centralized. Bingo. All right. So now what we're going to do is we'll merge this up. And this is now part of this. So we can actually delete all of this rectangle now. And if we look at the color... Notice it's the same color. And so we can build whatever we want to make this look attractive to us. We can build, for example, I like to use the rocket parts. So I tend to do this for my, when I build my nose wheels and my mains, I will use rocket parts. So now if we look at the color again, all green, it's part of the same package. One of the reasons I like using these is these have a steering node. So the, this steering node allows me to not have to rotate the gear. You'll often see, I've done it myself, sometimes you put a pivot in here. That is a weak spot. So if you look at these pivots, you can use one of these for steering. They're beneficial because they'll go 90 degrees. The other ones only go 45 degrees. But the point in the center here is a weak spot. So often the wheel will, will um, hit stuff and it will bang around. So you can use whatever you want here to connect that up. But we'll steer with this wheel. All right, so now we have our wheel in place for our nose wheel. Next thing we want to do is we want to get the doors put in place. So we want to figure out how we're going to do the doors. So first thing we need to do is where is the belly of the aircraft? So in the case of here, the belly of the aircraft is going to be right there. So we're going to go ahead and I'll build up the belly of the aircraft. All right, that is the belly of the aircraft. We'll actually go one more. All right, there is the belly of the aircraft. And now what we need is we need some doors that are going to be able to open to let that wheel in. All right, and so we're going to figure out the footprint we want of these doors. And so we don't need anything in the front because this is going to be a, a rearward wheel. It's going to go backward. So we need to start cutting out where we want in here. So we're going to look at the footprint of the wheel, and we don't need to necessarily go on this side. Let's just cut out pretty much only what we need. So we need to make a space so this wheel and this arm can make it up. So we'll start cutting that out like so. All right, so that there is where this wheel is going to rotate up. All right, so we need to put in some pivots now to be able to uh, account for this. So we're going to go ahead and we need to go one block further than those wheels, or the, the wheel and the, uh, and the main arm. All right, so that's going to be our area there of where we have to go. So I'm going to grab a pivot. And we want to make sure we get a robotic pivot, not a velocity pivot. 
And I'm going to make the arrows go to the right so that they will, because the gear is going to have to open more often than it closes. I'm going to put a block here. And we want one more block here and then like so. All right, good. Uh, this needs to be inverted. All right, so now, as you can see, the arrows are both on the inside. So this is where the doors are going to open. Now, you need to make enough space so that this wheel can come up and clear these. So you can do a quick test if you want. You can take a throttle. And you can connect it here to the... And we'll just make sure infinite electricity is on. And we'll go uh, actuate it. And we'll make sure that it does not hit those pivots. As you can see, it clears. So now it's in, it clears. Perfect. So let's go back in. And now we want to make our doors. So we need to make these doors wide enough that they can account for this. So first of all, on this right side, I'm going to use a 1x2 wedge. So we want to make sure we're connected to the pivot itself. And we're going to drag that forward like so. We see we have the gap here, so we put a 1x1 one one there. You can also do XML with this, but uh, I tend to do it this way. So let's go ahead and do 1x2s on this side. We'll drag it there, and then for this part here, you can do a couple things. One, you could XML a block in there. So right there, as you can see, we have our two gear doors all set up there. And those are going to open and close to be able to... Uh, Actually, we don't need that one here. We'll put a solid one there. So those are our two doors. These are going to open and take care of that. So again, we'll make another throttle for these. And this is all part of the testing. You want to test how these are going to operate for us. And so let's go. And we will open the doors. And then we will test the wheel going in. Make sure it doesn't hit or get caught. And then we will close it. And as you can see, nice and flush. All right. So we know that works. I recommend test it as you go through to make sure that your particular setup works. So that works for us, the gear. Next thing we need is we need what's known as a down lock. As the name suggests, this is a realistic, real term in aviation. A down lock locks the gear down. Pretty simple there. This is where a lot of people struggle is they're not locking their gear down, and it causes them to have problems where their gear will break. So what I recommend here is let's grab a hard point. And the reason why hard points were such a great addition to the game is we can actually put these in the locked position in the editor. For example, if we took connectors, let's... so if we took these connectors here, you'll notice that we can't put them in their locked position. We have to move them a block apart, so they'll try to snap together. We don't want that. So we're going to have the this here, and then what we want to do is we want to grab the other part here of the hard point. You're not going to see this, so it doesn't need to be super duper attractive. And as you can see, they slot into each other. So this will lock. If I spawn it, you'll hear the click noise. Hear the ding. Let me turn my sounds up. And we'll respawn it, and you'll hear it uh, connect. All right, so you hear it go ding, and that is connecting. So that is locked. Uh, I see this quick. This uh, problem on Reddit all the time this is one of the reasons I made the video is people are talking about how their gear collapses on the ground. By locking it down like you would in real life, they use a J-hook, it would it keeps the gear from collapsing on you. So as you try to uh, taxi forward on the ground, the wheel is going to get pushed forward, right? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So jet goes forward or plane goes forward, wheel wants to go backwards. This prevents the wheel going backwards. It locks it. All right, so now our nose wheel is locked. All right, so we need to do some things here. And so we need to get some numbers. So let's go in here and get some numbers. And actually, let's do this. So let's get a dial. We don't need the dial, but it'll be a little easier for you to see if we do it with a dial. So we're going to put a dial here. And what we want to do is we want to read the current rotation. All right, so reading current rotation will spawn that. As you can hear, they lock. All right. So I need to do this too. We need a toggle. All right. All right. Toggle button. All right. And I will release this to the workshop when it's done. So this here is going to go to release. All right. And this allows us to unlock our gear. So what we're going to do here is we're going to open up our gear door. So this is how the sequence will work when we when we press our gear switch. So we will go... Doors will open, unlock, wheel comes backwards, 
doors close. Right, and that's very much how it worked IRL. You know, I was a I was an airline pilot IRL. All right, and so that's how that does. Then when it goes down, doors will open, gear will come down, and lock. We'll automate all that. I didn't, don't think I hooked that up. Now, if we look at the robotic pivot, we see the current rotation is negative point zero 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 two, so essentially zero. All right, we're gonna unlock it really quick here. I'm gonna start going backward. Uh, Right one. Start going backwards here, and look at the position. That's 0.03. So let's say if it is, I don't know, let's say 0.02. So if it's 0.02, I want these doors to start opening. So let's close the doors and see if they'll close with that wheel in that position. It is. So at 0.02, you see, as you can see, it's a uh, current rotation there showing 0.0041. That's going to give us, that's going to tell the doors, hey, at this position, open. Then it's going to it's going to raise it up. Once it hits about this point here, the doors are going to close. And this is all going to be automated. All right, so let's start automating this nose wheel. So I have a panel called blank. You can also go up to the microcontroller to make a microcontroller. I just name one blank for convenience. And I will put this on the workshop. So you can use this microcontroller if you like. It is best if you customize your own. But um, So this is the landing gear, gear tutorial. All right. So I'm just going to make it. This one requires quite a few nodes. So first thing we want to do is we want to go, however we're going to trigger our landing gear. I like to use a panel. So I'm going to actually, I'll build the panel with you guys. You can see I also show gear indicators. So we'll do that. We'll make a gear switch and indicators. So that's going to be a composite. That's going to be in from gear panel. Okay, good. Next thing we need to do, we need a number input, nose wheel position. Nice. All right, add a node. Next is going to be number output, nose. Uh, usually I can just do gear, gear. All right, so that's going to go to the gear pivots. I'll put gear pivots. That way it's easier for guys to know what's going on there. All right, so that goes to gear pivots. Then we need a number, output, nose, doors. All right, each one of these wheels is going to independently control the doors. So actually I want to label this too. So that's fine, nose wheel position. We're going to have three, three landing gear legs on this. And so each of the legs, to make sure the doors open and close correctly, will have its own signal. It's a little bit overdone. You can... You can kind of cheat and do one, but the problem is if you pull a lot of G-forces, the wheels can kind of sag a little bit, and you want the doors to work accordingly. So let's uh, go ahead there. So let's get in here. Uh, one of the things I like to do now is I do a property text, and right here I name this spawn. This tells me where my stuff spawns, and the, I'll tell you the reason why I do this. As you build out your microcontroller, and you spawn in new nodes, they're gonna be in the middle of all your stuff. If you do this, what I do is I grab them all and I drag them down, and this area is where they're gonna spawn, so I always know where to find them. You don't have to hunt for where your stuff spawned. So leave it in the spawn area, they will spawn right here every time, right? Let's add another node, and bingo, there it is. It's always gonna spawn there, right? If we spawn another one, it's going to be right on top of that. Let's go, we'll do a composite node just so you can see they're different. As you can see, they're both there. So they always spawn there, so they're easy to find. All right, good. So let's go ahead here, and we'll start going into this. All right, so this is going to work with the nose wheel, and then we can copy a lot of this onto the mains. The mains are the main landing gear. All right, so gear panel. All right, so let's grab a panel. So this is going to be actually how we articulate our gear from now on. And so I'm going to go in here. I want this to be gear. I want, I'm just going to do a flip switch. That's going to be one. Next one is going to be a radial segment. And that's going to start on channel two. And it's going to be on off. It's going to be gear position. Now, this is something we have IRL and aircraft. And what you have is you have a bunch of different colors and they tell you some things. You're going to have green. So that means that the nose wheel is down and locked. This is going to be your right main is down and locked. This is going to be your left main is down and locked. Then what we have is what's known as transition. Transition means it's neither up or it's down. The gear is moving. All right. And so you can pick which one you want. What I usually do is nose wheel in transition, and I do mains in trans transition. 
Then what we do is we do red. Red means your gear is up, all right? And so if you have a hiccup there and you notice this gear is down and locked, this gear is down and locked, and this one is red, uh-oh, one of my wheels is not down. So, you know, IRL, you'd not be going in third person. IRL, most of the time you can't see your landing gear, right? I flew commercial jets. We, we could never see our landing gear. The only way we knew our landing gear was down was we had three green. So you would look over the fence. One thing pilots will also often do is they'll look, as soon as they go over the fence about the touchdown, they look at their gear indicator position, and they go three green. And that means that all wheels are down and locked. All right, so that's going to be the setup for this. And we'll go ahead and plug it in while we're at it. All right, so here's gear panel. All right, nice. So let's go ahead in here. And we have our gear panel now. So we know what our, our positions are going to be. So we're going to read on off. And that's going to be channel one, which is what what we just made. All right, good. So the next thing is all we were, all we're worrying about here is the gear pivots. Now this gear pivots, the reason it's called gear pivots is it can go. It, this one, this signal here can go to all three gear unless you want them to move at a different rate. You'll notice uh, like some World War II fighter jets. Uh, you know, B-17s were doing it. Uh, fighter jets. World War II. Uh, fighters and bombers, sometimes one of their gear would move faster than the other. And so if you like to simulate that, you can make them separate, but I'm going to make mine all go the same speed. So here we're, we're going to use an up-down counter. So I'm going to do 0.05, and we'll enable the clamp. It'll be 0 to 1. And what this is going to allow me to do is this allows me to make the gear go however fast or slow I want. If the gear is coming up too fast, I can slow it down. If the gear is going down too slow, I can slow it down. All right. So what we'll do here is this will go to the up node, and then we'll do a knot. And this one here will go to the down. So what this is going to do is when you Put your gear, when you flip the switch, it's going to start to count up to one. That's going to raise your gear. When the switch is in the off position, it's going to slowly lower the gear. You'll see people who have gear that instantly go down, instantly come up. Not only is that not realistic, it's also a good chance of getting something stuck. It's better to be able to uh, work your speed. All right, that's going to go straight to gear pivots like so. That's going to tell us to rotate. All right. And so we can actually set this up here, and let's go test it. So we're going to go ahead, and we want to hook up some other nodes. So this right here, nose doors, we'll just plug that in. We haven't got to it yet. This is gear pivots. All right. And we want to plug this into nose wheel position. All right. So pretty easy. Let's go in here, and I already have a node set. Let's go here. Let's go output. This is going to be gear lock. Gear lock. Now remember, it is releasing the lock. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grab the release here. And so when this flip switch goes, we want to do the gear lock. We'll update that. I need to plumb that in. Spawn it. I need to manually open my doors. I meant to manually unlock it, but now it will automatically unlock. It. So you'll hear it make that unlock noise in a second. So you hear it unlocked it. Now it's going to we're going to, the doors would close, open back up. Here comes the gear. And you hear it lock. Okay, it didn't slam it, it didn't grab it. It put it nicely, gently, and it locks it. Now, because that's locked, it's unlikely this is going to go backwards when you taxi forward. So the next thing we need to do is get into the doors. Okay, so this is really simple. All right, we're going to read nose wheel position. Now, you could do it with this, but the problem is, again, if you pull a lot of G-forces, it might overcome the pivots. You want the doors to open when the gear is not in the way of them, essentially. And you want them you want them to be closed when it is not in transit. So essentially, we need to find out when transit is. Now, so we want a threshold gate. And so this threshold here is going from nose wheel position. So if you remember, I said 0.02. And it, it reads point, I believe, 0.25 is going to be what's up. And that's going to be 0.24 right there. Let me just double check. That's from memory. So uh, let's actually spawn it, and I'll show you what I mean. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll if we look here and we page up, you'll notice current rotation. So I'm going to open the doors, and I'll flip it, and we'll read current rotation. Now watch. So see how it goes to 0.249982? That's what it's going to read to us. That's what it's going to tell us, 0.249. 
So what we're going to do is from 0.02 to 0.24. And that's going to have the doors automatic, automatically articulate for us. So we're going to go in here. And so again, what I said there, 0.02 to 0.24. And that was just me showing you why it's like that. Next thing we want to do, we want to do a numerical switch box. All right. So currently the doors are at their zero position. When the doors are open, they're at their one position. So we want zero to be the off value, and we want one to be the on value. All right, so we're going to hook that up. We're going to do a constant number, and this is going to be one. So when the gear is in transit, it will open the doors. So when the gear is down, the doors will be closed. When the gear is up, the doors will be closed. When the gear is anywhere other than down or up will be in the uh, closed position. And I need to hook that up. So now we'll hook these uh, nose doors up. Now, I highly recommend doing it this way. It's better than trying to do timing. We don't have to do timing. I can make this gear go faster or slower and never have to change the timing because there's no timing. If the gear is in the wrong position, if, if the gear is in a certain position, the doors will always be in the right position. So let's spawn it. And we will articulate it. So as you can see, doors automatically open, doors automatically close. Let's go down. Doors automatically open and close. If you want to change the speed of those doors, you can do it right here. All right? But as we see, it works pretty well on standard. All right. So this is where this I find is a lot uh, more superior to than timing. For example, let's go up here. So see it's at 0.05. Let's say we think that's too fast. So let's go half of that. I don't have to change the speed of the doors. I don't have to change the timing. I don't have to get out my stopwatch and check the timing. The wheel's moving half as fast, and the doors still respond because the door is based on its position, not on its speed. Let's go in here, and let's make it really slow. Let's go one-tenth of that speed. And now we'll articulate it one more time, and you'll see how even though we keep changing the gear speed, see how slow the wheel's moving now? The doors always work. We never have to screw around with timing. Never, ever, ever. Never have to mess with timing. All right. So you see, that was pretty quick to set up the nose wheel. We can get rid of all that. And now let's do the mains. All right. So the mains are... There are different types of mains. You can have forward and rear mains. You can have side articulating mains. It's all up to you how you want to do it. And so what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to grab some of this white block here. And I'm going to continue out the belly of the aircraft. So this is the belly of the aircraft here. And so we're going to have our gear go inward like on an airliner. All right. And so what we want to do is we want to set it up similarly. And we can do this. We can do a little bit more. Led two more here. We can do with symmetry here. So we're going to grab one of these pivots. All right. And we want to set this up. And as you can see, let's just go like that. And I have the arrow so that they're going to go up. And we, if we want so even uh, a little bit more compact, we can go like that. And we'll merge it. All right, now let's cut out some of this right under them, like so. And this is how we're going to have the wheels. They're going to go up sideways. All right, so I'm gonna, I am gonna—I like rocket motors, rockets again here. These are rocket fuel, rather. I keep saying motors. I mean fuel. That's how I like to set mine up here. And we're going to go ahead and... I'm going to use the 3x3s three three again. They'll be the same size wheels. Sometimes your mains are bigger. Generally, your mains are bigger. So you can kind of use what you want. But um, So I'm going to actually, this is, um, if we look at here, I'll grab a picture of the jet I used to fly. So this is uh, not the best picture, but this is the aircraft I used to fly. And as you can see, the it has exposed gear on this. So these gear will actually show. They'll be uh, inside here, but... This area is open, so you can either do an open well or you want to do a closed well, but it, it is uh, normal for the wheels to be exposed. So you can either set them up like this or you can go up even more. So we have our mains on there. Mains are pretty easy, so let's go ahead and start working on our microcontroller here. 
All right, and so we need to add some nodes. And so this one here is uh, one we can use. So we want to do number input. All right, so that's the port main position, the star main position. Same thing that it's doing for the nose wheel position is it is articulating the doors based on the position. All right, next thing we need, we need to do number output. We need port main doors. And here we need number output, and this is going to be starboard main doors. Okay, good. Let's go in here. And again, they all spawn up here. Nice and convenient. Not in the middle, and we don't have to hunt for them. All right, so let's go ahead, and we can put our outputs over here. And we can put our inputs over here. All right, and we can copy a lot of this. So what we want to do is pretty much copy... Where are we copying? This here. Let's move this really quick, move this really quick, and we'll put it right there. And I'll put it right here. All right, so this here is going to be the doors. And so this is port main doors. This is starboard main doors. All right, just like that. Then over here we have the port position, and we have the starboard position. Pretty simple there. So that sets up our three sets of doors. Now, we can use the gear pivots and the gear locks. We can use the same one for all of our wheels. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we want to put a lock in here. All right, so if we look at this here, as you can see, we have the, we want the lock probably right about here. So let's actually go like this. And I want a hard point. Now, you could put it on top if you want. I'm just going to put it on the side. So put it wherever you can. I uh, kind of wanted that. Let's go like this. So you can go like this, and then we can grab these two like so, cut them, and move them down. You actually have to go out as well. So let me undo that. So they need to go right here. Okay. Actually, no, uh, that was fine. Let's go back where they were. So they, they were fine where they were. So as you can see, we have our two locks. Now what we want to do is grab the other part of the hard point. It's going to go right here. And that will attach. That is now our locks. If we go in here, we take the same node here for gear lock. That releases them. We take our same node here for the gear pivots. We send it there. We then plug in the port rotation, and we plug in the starboard rotation right there. All right. These are going to be starboard main doors. That's going to be port main doors. Before we do the doors, we'll just make sure the gear articulates properly. As you can see, they're going to go up. These are going to get caught because I haven't cut in doors yet. But as you can see, they pull them in. So now, as you can see, we know where we need to cut out if we want exposed wheels. I like exposed wheels. That's what I had on the uh, jet that I flew, as I sh showed you the picture of. That's just my preference. Uh, 737s also have that. I think it's kind of cool. All right, so now those should fit. Let's go ahead and test them, see if the wheels come in and fit. As you can see, they come in, and they're flush. So nice uh, retractable landing gear. Now we have this area here that we want to cover. All right, so if we want to do uh, gear doors, one thing we can do a couple different ways. We can put another pivot in there. This lock is kind of in the way. We can move this lock if we wanted to. Go ahead and do that. So let's uh, let's change the way we do the locks. I think that's going to actually work better. So let's go like this. This will allow us to put in a closing gear door. So we'll go like so. Merge that up. We'll grab this one as well. So again, this is just aesthetics. The mechanics are working. So if you don't care about you know the way it looks or you don't want it to look that way, you can do it however you want for doors. The other thing you do is start XML and some blocks in. All right, so those go in now. Let's uh, make sure now the lock is in the in the on the legs. Let's uh, test it. Make sure it's working. 
All right, so as you can hear, see, it's all locked. The other thing you can do is when you come in here, somebody was having issues with their gear locks. They said they're locked. If you go ahead up to your hard point, see hard point connector body, press page up, you'll notice release false. All right. If you look at the actual lock and you read that information, launched false. So if it says launched false, it means it is attached. All right. Let's go ahead and cycle the mains. All right. You notice it's coming up. Those go through. No problem. Those don't have collisions. Coming back down. All right. That is locked. And we can test it by looking here, right here at this hard point. Press page up. Launched false means it's locked. All right. So we know our gear, all three of them are locked down. Now, if we want to make something to cover this area here, we need to have it rotate in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off of this, go like this. That is a one by two wedge. This is how it was on my aircraft. We had these little side doors like that. We'll cut it like so. We can cut that away. We don't need the little helper block anymore. And now let's check it. And that should cover up the where the, where the leg is. All right. And so we'll go one more higher than that. And then if we want to completely cover it up, let's say that this was part of the wing right here. If we want to completely cover it up, what I recommend is going with a uh, a wedge. The reason is the wedge has a smaller collision. And so what you can do on this side is you can cut here. You can put a wedge here. So from the bottom, this will look completely sealed. And now that should all slide by effortlessly. And this should cover it up nicely. So as you can see, that slides by fine. And that closes. All right, so pretty much all that's left of this is aesthetics. You can make this however you want. If you don't want the wheels to be exposed, you can move these wheels one over, have them come up in the body. You can have those same lowering doors. Let's quickly do that. You know, this hard point showing a little bit here. We could hide that. One thing you can do is XML a block across there if you want. Uh, let's say we wanted to actually completely enclose this in the doors. So let's uh, show you that. But again, the main part of this point of this video is just of how to set this up so that you have the gear controller working. So if you want to gear doors on this, um, like so. And so I'm just I have to do a helper block there. And this just reattaches the wheels by doing this here. So as you see, we move the wheel over one. All right, and so move the wheel over one. Now it is, uh, this will actually go up and hide in the body. I'll show you that really quick. So these will go up one more block and hide in the body. So if you don't want your wheels exposed at all, as you can see, they're up in the body. And we can make some, some uh, gear doors for these as well. So let's cut right here. We'll do pivots. Compact robotic pivot. And these will start like this. And these will initially start in the down position, but they'll go right up. So that will go there. I need to redo this a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll use these wedges here to fill this up. This just makes it so that the tire can fit in there a little bit better. And we'll just make some gear door on this. So again, this part is all up to your own creativity. The most important thing is just making sure it works properly. And this system works so much better than having timing. All right, so as you can see, we have those two there. Let's go ahead into the microcontroller. We'll connect them so we have port main doors. And we have starboard main doors. Let's go in and set them. So they are currently in the down position. So what we want to do is, and this one should have moved down like so. This one here should stay up. I just did the wrong one. Okay, there we go. And now if we watch here, 
You see both main doors closed. All main doors are closed. Let's open it up. There goes the mains. And we're clean. The only issue we have here is right here with this hard point, but that just means I can move it anywhere. I could stick it on the end here. I could stick it anywhere in there that's going to be hidden. All right. And so that is, uh, that's how I like to build landing gear. This is a pretty foolproof system. You know, like I said, if you're pulling G-forces, it will the wheel weight will try to overcome the pivots and tilt them down. This will keep them from doing that. They will always clear the doors because the doors are connected to each individual position. As you can see, they lock, they come unlocked. As you can see, real simple, real easy, efficient way to operate some gear. All right, so next thing, let's go ahead in here. And if you see, I have a gear position indicator there. Uh, let's go ahead and count this. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight of these. This is channel one that starts on two. So it'll be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm just going to go ahead and go like this. None and none. That way you just know those aren't supposed to be anything. So we have two through nine here. So let's go ahead and we'll do this final thing and that will set it up. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to add a node. It's going to be a composite. It's going to be output. It's going to be going out to the panel. We'll type gear panel there. All right, and then we're going to go in there and we'll grab it and we'll just bring it down here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to write on off. So we're going to start with channel two. And there's going to be eight channels, like I showed you before. This can go ahead and plug right into gear panel. All right. And so what this is, is each position will be turned on. So the first position, let's go look at it really quick again. So we count the positions here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one is going to be nose wheel down. Two is going to be starboard main is up. This is going to be mains in transit that's going to be starboard main down that's going to be nose wheel up that's going to be port main down that's going to be ports or uh, nose wheel in transit and that's going to be port main in the up position so let's go ahead in the microcontroller and we'll set that up all right so what we need to do is some threshold gates here so we need eight of these total all right and so some of them are going to be the same so we'll start with the first one so the first one here is going to be the nose wheel in the down position so what is the down position so we're going to go negative one to point zero two all right that's going to be the first position all right and so what we want to do is grab from nose wheel position and there that's going to turn on so when this is in that down position, it's going to turn it on. So let's do all of our downs at once. So we'll just copy that and paste those a couple times. The next one we need is the port main in the down position, and we need the starboard main in the down position. So if one is down, the next one is going to be starboard up, then it's transit. So we can count those out. So the next one there is going to be red, amber, green. So this is starboard, red, amber, green. That goes there. So where's our next green? So from the green, we have red, green. And this is going to go there. All right. So that is all of our, that is our three wheels in the down and locked position. Those are all green. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do up and locked because that is just the next position we have to read. So we'll grab another threshold here. And so up and locked is going to be from 0.24 to 1. All right. And so what we're going to be reading here is the starboard main up. That is going to be 2. And that will go right there. All right. So we have three of these that need to be for up. And so we'll put three in. So that starboard is done. We have the next one is going to be actually the nose wheel. So it's going to go green. Red, yellow, green, red. So here is red nose wheel. All right. It goes red, green, yellow, and then this one here, red. And so this one is going to be the port main. So these are our three mains in the up and lock position. All right. So the last thing we have to do is the transit position. So we want another threshold gate. 
And now in transit is going to be between these two. So it's going to be 0 0.02. You can do 0 0.021 if you want so that it's actually in between. And then the upper is 0.24. So we could do uh, 0.239, for example. And that's going to be our in transit. And so we need two of these. We need one for the nose wheel and we need one for the main. So we're just going to pick a main. So the main is going to be on is this first one here. So we'll just do the starboard main. And that will go to this one. And then we need to do the nose wheel position. So that's going to go to this one. So again, 0 0.02-ish to there. And that's going to plug in here. So let's go ahead and update that. And we'll take a look. All right, so we're ready to flip. So we have uh, down three green. We go into transit. And then we have up and locked. I'm going to go ahead and down, transit. And we have down and locked. So that gives us a visual indication of what's going on with our gear. So I hope you guys found that helpful. I think this is definitely the best way to do gear. You want to have locks that lock the wheels when they're in the down position. This is going to fix it from having them, say, uh, collapse while you're moving your aircraft around. It's going to prevent collapse from when you're landing. It's going to be much more stable. They have down locks IRL, so this is simulating that system. Timing is problematic because if the gear changes, if you have a little stutter in game, if you're fighting some G-forces and it pushes the gear down a little bit, you're going to have some issues. This always makes sure the doors will not collide with the wheels. The doors cannot collide with the wheels because the doors will automatically open and close dependent upon where the position of the gear is. So I hope you guys found that helpful. This is going to be uploaded to the workshop. You can check down in the description for that. And if you enjoyed that, uh, please uh, feel free to give a comment and a like. And I appreciate you for watching the video. Thanks. We'll see you later.